guys, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you guys enjoyed our last video on why we chose podiatry. We just finished our first year of medical school and we took notes on seven different tips that we wanna share with you guys. And so for our first tip we wanna share is time management. So for time management, it's a very useful skill to have. Uh, it's something that I've stressed to a lot of people to definitely work on because time management is all about using your time effectively and wisely while still being very productive. And that's one of the most useful skills to have in medical school because a lot of these tips that we're gonna share with you revolve around time management. Also, we're going to be making a separate video if you guys like on time management because I know that is something that some people struggle with when they're thinking about what does that even mean? How am I supposed to manage my time properly? Before I used to think I was doing fine because I would just hang out with friends for a certain amount of time. And then I would go and exercise for a certain amount of time, but I would never consider timing any of that. And then I come back, start studying, and it's way too late to get anything done efficiently. And so I sleep too late, and then it's a terrible cycle that continues. So time management is important, and we'll have a video out soon on that. Our second tip is exercise. Exercising is definitely a huge priority for me, especially medical school, because it was one of those things I went to and I just relieved whatever stress I had. But at the same time, it really enhanced my mood. I was always feeling better after a good gym session. And for me, it helped with my studying, it helped with my focus. And it was one of those things that me and a few other classmates just really, really depended on to get through our day and it was something that I could really depend on for me to feel better about myself overall. So I think exercising is definitely a key thing to do because you want to release those endorphins and you want to feel better and exercising definitely did the job for me. Just like what he just said, for me it was something that boosted my mood because I did always know that exercising should be a priority, right? You hear that all the time but I didn't emphasize that until my second semester when I would start going to the gym with him and just to have his gym buddy made it a lot easier for me. So if that's something you're struggling with, try to find someone who has that motivation, that fire within them to work out. And so um, I learned different things from him, what's effective to do at the gym with a certain amount of time. I mean, if I would go, I would go and probably run for 10 minutes and call it a day. But um, I started realizing it's most effective if you stay for at least 30 to 45 minutes, which you do have that kind of time during your day. So to go and do that is important. And I would be able to focus a lot better and I was a lot happier. Um, you just feel better about yourself if you're exercising and that's something that should be a huge priority I wish someone had told me that before because it's really important to me I want to make sure that we get videos that have to do with how we spend our time at the gym And if we don't have time for the gym, what are we doing outside of the gym? That is um, like we just want to make sure we're staying active So what do we do outside of the gym that is not weights weightlifting or a treadmill? Our third tip is socializing. Um, socializing is definitely an important aspect for our lives, especially in medical school, because I usually get burned out if I study too much, and socializing was definitely one of those things that I love to do. And so whenever I feel like I'm on the verge of burning out or I feel like I just need to be away from the books, uh, I also just go to my friends and we go out to get some food or get some dessert just to be away from all the studying and just get my mind off things, just to get that reset. And socializing was definitely one of those aspects that I really relied on. And every Friday I set up a special date just to have time for my friends. And, and that usually consisted of me calling them or going out with them. And that way it kind of put me into this routine that I could look forward to socializing and being away from all the studies and it was just again a good reset point for me what i realized was my first semester i made so many excuses i if you're anything like me you just prioritize studying because you think that's all that matters and so um i would just have my head in the books I'm constantly studying constantly trying to do my best which is great you should do that but it's really easy to make excuses and say okay i can't spend even an hour outside of studying 
Um, at the end of the day, you have to realize if you're sitting there studying for 10 hours, you're not getting as much done if you're not taking some breaks because hanging out with friends, reconnecting with family and old friends is really important because that helps you realize there's more out there. There, It's not just about studying all the time. It reminds, it almost helps you remember why you got into this in the first place and reminds you, you do have a support system. And I found that all of this was something that was essential for me to be able to focus. Yeah, so just a little bit on that. You, you don't want to seem, feel like you're just a robot and you're just constantly studying. You do have a social life, use it whenever you can because things do get harder and things do get more stressful. So it's important to utilize social time as much as you can and enjoy it. Enjoy it with all those friends and family and enjoy that company that you have as you make it through your way in medical school. For tip number four, um, this is one of the more important tips, is using upperclassmen as a resource. I can tell you that uh, the upperclassmen in our school have been very helpful for my first year of medical school. When I was going to my first year of medical school, I was very unsure and I felt reluctant about certain things that I was doing. I was kind of nervous about what I was actually expecting. But a lot of the upperclassmen did give us tips and study tips on how to prepare for some of the classes you're going to take because a lot of these classes can be stressful at first glance. But as you get into the routine of doing these classes and notes and share some of their resources with you and share some of the insights they have on certain professors, it really helps ease some of that stress and tension that you might have as you go through some of these classes. Um, I know uh, at the beginning of my first semester, I immediately contacted one of the upperclassmen because I needed tutoring for physiology is one of definitely one of the hardest subjects um, out of my whole class load. And it definitely helped me to prepare better for that class. And it, it showed me that I could be very successful as long as I'm using some of the upperclassmen as valuable resources. Right, and you could also plan ahead of, say you wanted to know what you should probably plan fourth year, your second year and your third year. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's really helpful to know what they're going through as well. And then you can plan backwards. And also for me, it was helpful to talk to upperclassmen because they have valuable insight about research opportunities or other organizations or what they're doing outside of class. Um, it's helpful to see how they manage their time, um, what their study tips are like. And obviously, even though we're saying all of this, yes, it does apply to every school, but when you want to go into something further than that, only the upperclassmen at your specific school would be able to guide you in that. Exactly, and I totally agree with what you said. Tip number five, office hour. Something that was really important to us, going to the professors for their office hours throughout the two semesters um, during the year, because especially for me, if there's anything I needed help with concept wise, the best person for me would be the professor for the class to explain the information because you never know, um, a lot of us might hear something different content wise, or we think something's going to be on the exam when it's actually not very relevant to the subject or even for the boards. So it's important just to consult your professor for that sort of thing. And also it's the one time that you can get the one-on-one -on -one sessions with your professor. Otherwise, you know, class can be hectic. There's a lot of other students wanting their questions answered. Um, then you're always thinking about going to the next class. So it's important. Go check out office hours, go talk to your professors one-on-one. -on -one. If you need any special tutoring, don't be afraid to ask your professor for that. Because uh, even during office hours sometimes, there's a lot of students that are trying to seek the help. Also, in office hours, it's also a good way to gauge what, how the teacher, what the teacher is like and what they really expect from you sometimes. Because sometimes they clearly list all the objectives they want you to know, but sometimes they don't clearly list all the objectives they want you to know. So it could be easier for you to go to these office hours and ask them questions about what they expect. And this way, this could cut down, cut down your studying time and you could just study smart, studying harder. 
uh, that was definitely a motto that I that's really stuck with me over my course of my first year and it's something that hopefully you guys can really utilize because it's important for you guys to just take everything and just really compile everything in a very smart and organized way without having to have all this stress and burden of studying all these facts because sometimes teachers they know that you're going through a lot and they want you to just get the most important information well without having you to go through too much stress so really go to office hours really try to talk to these teachers get to know them on a one-on-one -on -one basis and make sure you just have really good questions and it will help you and it'll help, help them understand what your learning style is like. That's true. Also, another thing I just remembered, um, application for concepts that I have a hard time grasping, a good way for me to really iron it out in my head is to ask application questions. So if I think something is related to something else, I could ask the professor about that. Um, even if it might not, not even seem like it's related, it's fine because you're asking these questions outside of class and they have time for it and professors love seeing that you're interested so they won't be bothered by it. So yeah, make sure you see your professors during office hours. Mm -hmm. Tip six, participate in clubs and events. This is one of my most favorite tips because I love going to events and I love going to the meetings. They all remind me why I'm doing podiatry because we talk about all sorts of new research or we'll have podiatrists come in and talk to us about their practices mm -hmm. or they'll talk to us about orthotics or we just have a whole range of things that we talk about during club meetings. And, and to me, it gets me pumped up and excited about our, my future and why I would be doing this in the first place. And, it's all incredibly exciting and it pushes me to work my hardest, kind of refuels me in a way. Yes, yeah, so participating in clubs and events are very important. What Diksha said, uh, all her points are very good points. Also, we did go to this event called ACFAS in New Orleans. The link to our journey and our blogging experience will be right here. That was a really fun experience. And it was one of those things that got us out of our comfort zone because it was in the beginning of our second semester, first year. And again, it was all the way in New Orleans. And we were there for a few days, but I enjoyed that experience because it was something that, again, you, we cannot recreate but we learned so much about podiatry and so much about what the field entails for us and all the different doctors and students that came out. And it was just an incredible experience. And that's some of those, those experiences is what you guys should go through and really experience throughout your journey of medical school to really feel what, to just really see and feel what the field has to offer. So definitely participate in clubs and events and you never know where it will take you. So just enjoy every moment you have and enjoy every event you can participate in. Yeah, you can learn how to network and you're going to be able to meet new people that will just end up being lifelong friends in a way. And the information that you could learn at these meetings, I always learn something new, mm -hmm. but you could take what you learn and See, uh, usually it'll come up eventually in your career somehow, and you'll be able to remember it better because you learned it outside of an academic setting. That's what I'd say we both enjoy the most about these events. Um, so make sure you go out, join an organization, anything that you'd like, go to club meetings, get yourself out there. Tip number seven, continue doing the hobbies you're passionate about. I know for some of my classmates, they like to do photography on the side or they like dancing. I, for one, like spending a lot of my time on YouTube. It might seem like a problem, but I like watching some of these content creators and seeing what they do for their channel to grow and some of the equipment they use to make their videos look really good. Um, and so I try to learn from them and apply some of their skills and some of their knowledge onto the videos that we have and to make our YouTube channel grow. So I'm spending a lot of my time doing that too. And I feel like it's a good way for me to be productive for this channel to grow. Dancing and those YouTube videos help me de-stress because in a day where I've just, I haven't moved at all, I've just been sitting there studying, it's really fun for me to just move to music that I love and choreograph for weddings. 
things of that sort. It's, uh, for me, it's very rewarding to be able to see something more of uh, my creative side in play because like a confidence boost when sometimes you need it when you're just constantly studying and doing the monotonous work like that. Lastly, uh, we'll be sharing our study habits, our eating habits, and our exercise habits with you guys in the near future. So hopefully look out for those videos by subscribing to our channel. In addition, we guarantee you the tips that we've shared with you today will bring you great success in your upcoming years of medical school. Take care, guys, and hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Catch you later.